Uh, we also have Young Don. We we wish Who's good for him. Who's this guy? Uh, he's What's the other guy's name? Sneeko. Uh, in it, she reads the part where it says, Jesus is God. How can you learn more and more about himself? Uthman ibn Farooq's top 10 reasons why Jesus is not God. Or Jesus said, me and the Father are one. Okay. But then he also told the disciples that me, the Father, and all of you are one. He's trying to psych himself up. <laughs> That's exactly why he couldn't be God. Because who was sent for Andrew Tate? Yes. Sneeko and Young, young Don. Boy. And for everybody else. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. Exciting episode with an exciting guest, an exciting topic. And <laughs> you got to guess who's in the Dean Show studio. My brother, your brother, Sheikh. It's man, Ben Farooq. How you doing? Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you been? How you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Loving it, man. Spending some time here in Chicago, seeing you and uh, working on the Dean Center, inshallah. A great project. I'm really excited. We ask Allah to accept it and increase it. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We went to the streets to ask Americans about Islam. Here's what they said. Do you know anything about Islam? No. Do you know anything about Islam? No, sadly. Do you know anything about Islam? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Islam? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what Islam means? Islam? Uh, no. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. That's what you've been told, that Muslims are out to kill you all? Well, that's what they say on TV. Anything? I know it's in the Middle East, isn't it? Well, then you can have four wives. Brothers and sisters, as you can see, there are so many Americans who don't know about Islam. We need your help to change that. Help us to build the Dean Center, the first mega dawah center in America. We have $500,000 left, and we need your help to finish. Click the donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. I mean, I mean, thank you so much. And I said exciting talk, talk, uh, topic that we're going to be talking about. I just want to give a little bit of a background because you have a very intriguing, very touching story of how you actually came to where you're at today. Mm -hmm. And just in a nutshell, before we get into the individual that we're going to be talking about, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. Peace and People blessings want to know, be upon like, him. Um, like, why is this Muslim talking about Jesus? But you are someone who was going to the church at sure. one point you know knowing more than the pastor you know <laughs> because you were asking questions they couldn't answer and you yeah. got very almost to a point of that i i think you you could have been uh, the pastor at the at the church <laughs> you know it's funny because uh growing up i didn't go to the masjid uh, i didn't know muslims uh, all my friends were either catholic or christian or some denomination of christianity and i used to go to church with them um i've been to every single type of church you can imagine uh, from Kingdom Halls to uh, any Catholic churches, Southern Baptist churches. And I used to actually pay attention. I, I used to love to learn. And uh, I, the Bible that you see with me in a lot of the da'wah videos, the brown covered one, I've had that since that time. So people think that I went to the Bible just to debate, but that's not true. I, I wanted to learn. But I found a lot of things that didn't make sense or things that didn't fit. And I would ask the pastors, and I went through the whole Bible, cover to cover. I mean, I've got highlights throughout the thing. I took notes into it. I put stickies. And the pastors many times would get upset because they wouldn't know. And they would, instead of giving me an answer, they would just kick me out. So <laughs> I've been kicked out of a lot of churches. Um, but I, I kept going back to different churches and learning because I always wanted to know the truth. So I've done a good amount of studies in the Bible, yes. Now, there was an interesting story that you shared with me. Was it a preacher pastor someone in the church older man who was someone who saw some of your work and some of your dialogues that you've had and then he, you gave some evidence from the bible mm -hmm. and again this is not to go ahead and put down any religion or to no. you know we love jesus i mean that's a fact yes you know and this is we want good for humanity so this is not like hey we got one on you we're trying to you know uh, put anybody down or anything but we're just trying to relay you know a simple clear message that the same message that jesus uh, spoke and brought to the people based on evidence and proof so now you did that and this what was he a pastor he was a pastor he, he saw a this and what yeah. happened alhamdulillah uh he's somebody 50 
plus years in the church. Fifty plus, plus years, years in the church. church yeah. Pastor. Pastor. Pa- pastor. Fifty plus years in yes, the church. Yes, he taught the gets Bible. Gets a hold of one of your videos. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think he's around seventy something years of age, and he got a hold of some of the videos. And per his uh, message that I was showing you, um, at first he didn't like it because you know sometimes. When we educate people and they come from a mindset, they take it as a shock. And especially if we have any Christians watching, uh, I want them to understand that we come from a place of love. We want guidance for everybody. We want good for everybody. And just as Jesus brought the message of the one creator who sent Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. And we love Jesus so much that you will notice that even when me or you mention his name, we send peace and blessings be upon upon him. him. Um, You'll see, for example, some people... Uh, like we had a uh, gentleman from Israel that came to our table recently and you can see the video and we asked him what do you think about Jesus and Christians and he called Christianity a cult and he called Jesus uh, very inappropriate names as the faith that he follows believes but we as Muslims we love Jesus peace and blessings be upon him we believe he was uh, a person who brought the truth we believe he was born miraculously we believe that uh, Mary was a virgin this was a miraculous birth this is our belief and our belief as uh, many uh, historians have said is closer to the true original followers of Jesus peace and blessings be upon him their belief than Christians today and I encourage other people to research for example there is a uh, Dr. Bart Ehrman who is an atheist today or agnostic atheist uh, but he is one of the top authorities he was a Christian uh, on the Bible and the history of the Bible and early Christian traditions and I have a video from him where he talks about this he says the early Christian followers of Jesus peace and blessings be upon him that were around him did not consider him God they took him to be a prophet somebody who brought a message but did not worship him as a God until the Council of Nicaea, this was not standardized. There were those before the Council of Nicaea that took this view, and there were others. There's a group called the Arians, not, nothing to do with the race. It's actually a Christian group. And others who did not consider Jesus to be a God or the Son of God. This is part of the history. I this mean, is part history, of history. This yes. is all there. And there are documented. books we're not that Muslims have been written. not making this up. No. Uh, as I said, Dr. Bart Ehrman is not a Muslim. We yeah. don't claim he's a Muslim. Um, and others, not just him, that have talked about this. So it's kind of like uh, when you get that injection, that shot, that's supposed to be of some type of medicine, it's a sudden jolt. Yeah. It kind of jolts you, so this is a jolt of truth. <laughs> yes. Right? But if you let it sink in, let it do its right, process, right. think about it, you know, pray to God Almighty alone. Mm-hmm. I meant like many have, like this person, didn't this pastor sure. end up accepting Islam? Alhamdulillah, he accepted Islam. Um, his wife is still a Christian. Uh, much he of accepted Islam. Did he become an Arab? He's he an American. He's, he's an American, he yeah. A- a- In Arab? fact, neither one of us is Arab either. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, Islam has nothing to do with uh, any ethnicity. Obviously, the majority of the Muslim world is not Arab. I think around 14% is Arab, but the rest of the 80 uh, Six percent is uh, non-Arabs, the largest Muslim country uh, population-wise, Indonesia, and Alhamdulillah, uh, in America, us who are Americans as well, we we are Muslim as in America. We have no ties to any ethnicity. Um, he is a Muslim today. That pastor, not just him, we've had many. If you watch the One Message Foundation channel, you will see different pastors and preachers who watched our videos who uh, came out and they approached us and many of them accepted Islam. Uh, We've even had conversations with Unitarian Christians who till today do not believe in a trinity. Um, This is till today a Christian segment that's out there. So we want our Christian viewers to know that this narrative of the trinity and Jesus being God and also the Son of God and maybe God and the Son, uh, this has not been the narrative of Christianity throughout history. This is something that was invented. A lot of pagan ideas, God and Zeus and Hercules and all this stuff has been brought into Christianity. Mm-hmm. Eddie, I'm going to I'm going to drop a, a a truth bomb here, right? A another sh- injection. Jolt, another yeah. injection. If you're a Christian and you're watching, I want to ask you a question and this is f- a rhetorical question. I want you to ask yourself. Do you celebrate Christmas? Where do you think Christmas came from? You think it's in the Bible? Do you think the 25th of December is in the Bible? you think Santa Claus and reindeer and eggnog and these Christmas trees? If you read your Bible, there's actually verses that condemn 
putting gold on trees and this type of practice. These are pagan festivals. Saturnalia was a pagan idol worshipping festival that was brought into Christianity. I, I challenge our Christian viewers to research this on your own. This is, this is a, a, a want for you to know the truth. On your own, Google it. Look it up. Are you trying up. to show them you're better than them? Or I am not. Are you trying I am to not. Like I'm condemn somebody? You know, uh, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not saying I'm better. I'm not saying I'm more knowledgeable. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying I believe that there's a lot of sincere Christians who want to know the truth, who want to believe in God as he, they should. And I want them to open their mind and read and look this up on their own. Nothing to do with me, not for a debate, not for viewers, nothing of that. And see that your churches have been promoting Christmas, a pagan festival. In every household, they have these festivals in churches. Their church is next to my house. They have Christmas trees. They light these lights up. When this has nothing to do with Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. And then think to yourself, what other pagan traditions have been brought into the religion that you think is the religion of Th Jesus. That's one example. Peace and you can go on and give it more and more, huh? We can go yeah. on. I mean, look at Easter and the bunny yeah. and the, uh, the eggs and uh, where these things came from. I want to get into Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love. Mm. And you can't be a Muslim. You can actually get yourself a free one-way ticket to the hellfire as a Muslim if you deny Jesus. Is that true? That correct? is true. Now tell me, uh, before I get into what I really want to talk about, Jesus, who's beloved to almost two billion Muslims in the world today, mm. if you were, because they're hearing these words, Islam, Muslim, but if you were to do like a taste test, right, mm. and you were you were putting a label on it, and you were just to blindfold someone and say, hmm, taste this, taste this. But if you put in certain labels on it, then bef even while someone's tasting it, if they attribute in their mind something negative to it, then they might even forget about how good it tastes. That is true. So do you see that now when people, because there's so much garbage thrown out there, so many lies and deception on this term Muslim. So a lot of times if you just define the word, you didn't even say Muslim, mm. but you s and you would define it. Muslim, you define it find it and then you define what a christian is or a hindu do you think any god conscious person would pick this de definition that is what you and me are and what we're inviting them to islam and, uh, and I, to be a muslim uh, you know to be one who is submitted to the will of god of course a muslim comes from the word aslama that is the root word for it which is to submit a muslim is the one who does that they submit their will to their creator and that's why we believe jesus was a muslim by the definition of the word. We believe Abraham, Moses, all the way from Adam to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon all of them, were Muslims. They all did the will of the Creator. They submitted themselves. In fact, even if Christians read the Bible, you will find that Jesus says that it's not my will, it's the will of my, my Father, the Lord. But if a Christian says, well, that's what a Christian is. Excellent. So if you look at the word Christian, look at the definition. It means the followers of Christ. And before Jesus Christ, there was no word Christian. There were no Christians. Because by definition, they could not be. Without Christ, how would you have Christians? But the word Muslim is not tried to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Rather, the word Muslim is Aslama. In the Quran, in the holy book of Islam, you will find Abraham, peace and blessings be upon him, talking about them being Muslim. So we believe and we can prove through the definition of the word that all of the earlier prophets were Muslim. But if you take the word Christian, you cannot say that Moses was a Christian. There was no Christ. So you cannot link that definition. One who submits consciously to the creator of the heavens and earth, alone without any partners associated to God's will. Mm -hmm. You cannot link that to any other religion or of any, course. any other word. Exactly. If you look at Can Judaism, you? you cannot. You cannot. And if, if you look at Judaism, come from the word Judah. Before Judah, there's no Judaism. If you look at Christianity, it comes from the word Christ. Even if you look at other philosophies like Shintoism or uh, if you look at Confucianism, it comes from Confucius. Before Confucius, there's not Buddhism from Buddha. Before Buddha, there's no Buddhism. But Islam has been that true religion since the time of Adam, peace and blessings be upon him, till the day of judgment. That one message. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, you will find that as the religion of Islam. Hear, O Israel, your Lord is one. What do we say in Islam? Qul huwallahu ahad. That Allah is say, that Allah is one. Same message that was brought by Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. 
We as Muslims love all the prophets. You will never see a Muslim disrespect any of them. You never see a Muslim make a cartoon of the prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, or to mock him. Even when other Christians and atheists and others, they mock the prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. We as Muslims condemn that. You've never ever seen, have you, Eddie, a Muslim making a caricature of Jesus to mock Jesus? Never, Peace and blessings never, be upon never, him. Never, never. We as Muslims, the Quran tells us, we make no differentiation between the prophets. We believe in all of them equally. So if me as a Muslim, if I didn't believe in Jesus, Peace and blessings be upon him, as a true prophet of God, I would no longer be a Muslim. That's deep. It's easy to understand, simple. And hopefully that truth injection, you know, wake somebody out, up, wake some people up. All right. So let's get into this. Do you think you can come up? We've done this before. Do you think we can come up with Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq's top 10 reasons why Jesus is not God or the son of God? You think we we'll can give it a shot? We'll no, a no shot? prep work here. We haven't prepared this. Okay. So this is going to be all off the cuff. Right, where would you live? start with if we went from number 10? And you're talking to our sincere, sure. you know, our neighbors out there, people who we have love for. Because Prophet Muhammad, is it correct? He said, God Almighty, Allah is saying that he was sent as a mercy to all mankind. Yes. Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, as a rahma, a mercy lil alameen for all of mankind, for all of the creation, not just a mercy for the Muslims. And that's why we say that the message of Islam is for everybody. It's not for Arabs only it's not for pakistanis or indonesians or malaysians or saudis this is for everybody we do not say any race is superior to another the prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him told us that the arab and the non-arab the white the black they're all equal none, none are better than the other except whoever has more piety whoever has more god consciousness then because of their good characteristics they can raise the ranks but race has nothing to do with it so this is very straightforward, straight, very clear. We're going to get into now because some people are on the fence. Many people are confused. They're like, okay, God the Father, Jesus, Holy Ghost. And here come mm -hmm. the Muslims saying only one God prayed to the God of, uh, that Jesus prayed to. Mm -hmm. And now let's get some clarity here. Let's start let's with number 10 and we'll go work our way down. Number 10. Um, from my own study, and I have uh, in my personal library, I have a section that has uh, Bibles, Christian literature, uh, MacArthur Study Bible, for example, and so on. And I have a section that has uh, books that have to do with Judaism and the study of the Old Testament, according to Jewish scholars. And in that, I have never found any mention of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, explicitly before his time. Meaning if you look at the Old Testament, and yes, there are Christians that will try to make uh, references into things in the Old Testament. But those earlier scholars before the time of Jesus, the commentaries that have been orally written and then orally preserved and then written by Jewish scholars have never found any reference to Jesus before his time. Peace and blessings be upon him. So if he was God, if God was a trinity, if God was not one, then we would have found a reference explicitly to the Trinity in the old documents and we do not. We find instead an emphasis on the monotheism, only one God, not three in one, not two in one, just one God. We find no explicit statement about Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, in the Old Testament. Now you can say God had his word and that, but then again, all the biblical scholars of the past, Jewish scholars, explain that, that this is not a reference to Jesus. So if Jesus was God, then he would have always been God. God doesn't become God at a certain time. So number 10 is no reference to Jesus before his time. Okay, um, let's go on to number 9. Number 9. I don't believe God is born out of the womb of a woman. The, if you look at the greatness of God, and if you look at the might and glory of God, to me, and again, this is my own opinion, uh, I don't see that this is befitting the creator of the universe, the ever-living, everlasting, all-knowing God, that he breastfeeds, you know, <laughs> or, you know, pees on himself as a child would. would. A again, you can't have a square circle, right, Eddie? Um, I really want uh, our you Christian... You can't have a tall, short man. A tall, short... I mean, l let me just use this example, and, and I want our viewers who are Christians to understand 
we're saying this as out of love for you for to guide to be a means that you wake yourself up and just think through this this is not a debate this is not to put anybody down just take a moment pause the video if you want and just contemplate this can you have a square circle by definition if it has corners it cannot be a circle and if it has no edges it cannot be a square we don't say that it, it, God can't do things. God can do anything. But when you have something by definition that doesn't match, it just can't so be. infinite and finite. Exactly. Right? Two totally different. So if, according to the Bible itself, and you can look up your Bible. I mean, I didn't prepare verses here, yeah. but you can look it up. God is the knower of everything. Yeah. And God is all capable. And all God can is all powerful. You cannot be all capable, all powerful, all knowing, and uncapable, and, and knowing. then learn the Bible. <laughs> yeah. You know, there is a little video of a little girl, Christian household, and she's 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 reading a little Christian book, and she says, you know, uh, in it she reads the part where it says, "Jesus is God. How can you learn more and more about Himself? Because Jesus is God." Uh, Jesus. Learned about God. And that's a little girl. <laughs> and that's a little girl. Maybe you can add the clip. Yeah. And that's amazing. Her fitra, this is called her her, her natural innate, innate state. Nature's question. Exactly. It's a great question, Emily. So how can you learn more and more about himself? Because it said, Jesus grew up. He learned more and more about God, his father. Well, exactly. She, as a little child, understood that if he was God, then how would he learn about himself? Yeah. He would know himself. He wouldn't need to read about himself, right? So to me, to say that if a, if, if a child is born not knowing anything, if that child urinates on himself, which children do? I've got children. I have no uh, issue with you know understanding that those are things that naturally children, they breastfeed, they go through you know diarrhea, all this thing. But that is not something that I can attribute to the almighty creator of the universe. Yeah, that's, I mean, square circle, you can go on with this all powerful powerless you know these are opposites you can't be at the same time exactly uh, number eight number eight when I look at the Bible and I've studied the Bible cover to cover with different types of Christians I see that Jesus prayed to the Father right and I'm gonna make this two different ones one is that he supplicated meaning he was asking of the Father so if Jesus was God and according to Christians that I have spoken while on earth he was fully God they claim that they were co-equal meaning him and the father are equal and they are and he is fully God then why would God be, be asking of somebody else why is he praying himself exactly why is he talking to himself and we never find the father praying to Jesus what if we someone says he's, he's trying to psych himself up <laughs> that's exactly why he couldn't be God because God doesn't need to psych himself up <laughs> <Continue>. <laughs> so when you look at his supplications like oh you know father take this bow away from me um, you know uh, why have you forsaken me and so on and so on him supplicating to the father it obviously shows that he was in need of the father and that would mean that he is not God beautiful I mean this is just common sense it is doesn't make a take a, a lot of mental gymnastics where you got to uh, you know it's go very around simple your mind, trying to your mind spinning trying to make it simple you're just and saying. it's something that as Christians as, as, as atheists as agnostics as whatever background you may be it will feel right in your heart to say that God doesn't pray to a co-equal God if it that was true then the father should also pray to Jesus then the Holy Ghost should pray to Jesus I don't even know what the Holy Ghost is in this picture. I mean, yeah. you, you look at, usually it's not even mentioned in a lot of the verses. Um, and I'm going to go to the next one. What number are we now on we're now? On seven. Seven. So we're going through this pretty quick. Number seven is that Jesus put his forehead on the ground. He put his face, he fell on his face, praying to God, to the Father, according to their Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a Christian and you read this verse, think it through. First thing I want you to think about is who do you see praying like Jesus today? Putting their forehead on the ground. Take a look. Just type in uh, online Muslims, Muslims praying. Muslims praying. Right. You will see Muslims praying as your Bible, which you have a claim to, 
shows that Jesus prayed that way. He fell on his face. Fell he put his, his face. face on the ground and he prayed. And in your own Bible, if you go in the Old Testament, you will also find Moses and Abraham and other peace and blessing be upon all the prophets praying in that way. I have been to many different churches and I have seen everything from singing choirs and hallelujah and jumping up and down and speaking in tongues. I have yet to see a Christian congregation regularly pray in the way that Jesus prayed. I've had some Christians tell me that there is a certain sect of Christians that pray this way. I keep hearing that. You've heard that, right? But I've never seen this never sect. Seen it, yeah. And why is not every sect praying like that yeah. if that's what the Bible says Jesus did? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that God puts his head on the ground and prays to God, right? The earlier one was supplicating. Here it's praying. Mm. So when you see Jesus praying to the Father, as he's referenced in your Bible, then obviously the Father or God here is the one that deserves to be worshipped, and Jesus worships him. I don't believe God worships God. That doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense to you, Absolutely Eddie? Absolutely not. If you're honest with yourself and you're sincere, you would say the truth, and the truth shall... Set, set you, you free. free. So tell exactly. the truth to yourself. That's the worst when you do kufr, lie, you know, and cover up the truth. So number, we're going through this quickly, fairly quickly. Let's get through them all. Six. Number six. In the Bible, we find the devil, Satan, tempts Jesus. I don't believe God gets tempted. Humans get tempted, yes. Um, even pious people get tempted. Righteous people get tempted because humans have that weakness, you know. خُلَقَ الْإِنسَانُ uh, In the Qur'an that Allah created insana ضَعِيفَ In the state of weakness. Humans have weaknesses. We get tempted. We have desires. We have shortcomings. That is true. God, the Almighty, the creator of the universe, does not get tempted. God cannot be tempted by Satan. And if Christians were to come back and say that at that time he was in his human form, then we would say that if you say that, that means he was no longer God. Can't have a square circle. Mm -hmm. Either you can be tempted or you cannot be tempted. You can't, and you can't, you make can't be both. You can't be both. You can't make God into like a Superman. Yeah. He's like he's, he's God. He's got a switch, just, turns it on and off. Or <laughs> yeah. Number five. Number five. We're getting to the fun ones now. If we look at uh, the Bible and the narrative that Christians put forward, Jesus is killed. And we as Muslims do not believe that the Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, was killed. But this is what Christians say. Then I would say that cannot be God because God cannot be killed. He is all living, ever living. If you could kill God, and just, just think about this, wouldn't you be more powerful than God? If you can overpower me, then obviously you're stronger than me. Mm -hmm. And if people killed God, look at what kind of a sin that would be. How could that be a means of forgiveness? I don't believe God can be killed. And I had a, I had a debate, you can watch the, U, the One Message Foundation channel, where in two sentences we finished uh, the Christian debate. The first question was, is God ever living? Can he be killed? They said, no, God can't be killed. He's ever living. Second question was, was Jesus killed? They said, yes. I said, oh, then Jesus can't be God. If he's ever living and cannot be killed, then Jesus couldn't be killed. And if he's saying Jesus was killed, if that's the Christian doctrine, then it contradicts what they just said. He cannot be killed. And if the idea is that he was killed, but he was going to come back to life anyway, then where's the sacrifice? <laughs> you know, if, if I knew that, I, you know, it's like a movie, if I kill you, you're going to come back in the next episode, you're not really sacrificing anything then, right? So that doctrine doesn't make sense to me. I don't believe God can be killed makes no sense who's running the world you can just go on with this you know what i mean right um and it, it goes back into infinite finite you can just unpackage this this you know and just keep running with it let's go to number four number four if we look at the biblical uh narrative of jesus we find that jesus was betrayed and when he was betrayed and taken by the Romans, he requested God to take that away from him. Oh God, like my to the Father, to take this bowl away from him. He wanted to be freed from that punishment. And 
even on the cross, according to Christians, he asked God or the Creator, the Father, according to biblical terminology, that why have you forsaken me? You know, he wanted to be taken off the cross. He wanted to be taken off. So that tells me, even in what they present as Christians, that could not be God. If the idea is that Jesus came to this world to be killed, if that was the plan, then why would he want that punishment taken away? Then that was the plan. Then he should have been like, hey God, you haven't forsaken me. This is the plan. <laughs> and if he's telling God, if you've forsaken his, me. Yeah. If right. that's his mission. If that's his mission. Why is he questioning the mission now? Exactly. So if the mission was to be crucified for the sins of mankind, then that's the plan. Then he should yeah. have been happy His with statement it. statement contradicts that. Exactly. Yeah. And if he's asking for this to be taken away from him, if he doesn't want this, and uh, if he was God, then he could do it himself too. He could walk away from it. But the fact that he was against uh, this moving in that direction shows to me that according to the Christian narrative, he could not be God. Mm -hmm. Where That was number... Four, right? That was number four. So we got three left. Three left. Here we go. Let's All right. Let's go number three. Number three. I believe that God is one. And if you look at the Old Testament, if you look at the uh, earlier scriptures, and even if you look at the New Testament, and you look at all of the references towards the Ten Commandments, we find a reference to one God. Now, some Christians may come back with some ambiguous verses, right? They may come back and say, Jesus said, me and the Father are one. Okay. But then he also told the disciples that me, the Father, and all of you are one. Right? In the same Bible that the Christians put. So, if they were to take that that means Jesus is a part of God, then that would mean the disciples are all God. For example, me and you, Eddie, we might say we're one nation. Like, you know, we say one nation under God, for yeah. example. Does that mean me and you are the same? No. Or does that mean me and you are on the same page? We are doing the same, same mission. Page, yes. right? we are, for example, we as, a, yeah. we as a country, we share some values. We have the constitution. We have these things. So we say we are one nation. But that doesn't mean we're the same people. We're we, you're an individual. I'm an individual. You have your own characteristics. I have my own. You have your own shortcomings and good qualities. I have my own. So when you look at God here, and you have no explicit verse in the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, where Jesus clearly says, I am God. Rather, every time God is mentioned in the Old Testament or the New Testament, you see a reference to Jesus saying that the one only God, that there is one God. So that means it cannot be three. You cannot say the Father is God and Jesus is God and the Holy Ghost is God and the Father knew everything and Jesus was on earth and Holy Ghost was, I don't know, going around on top of people and all three are one and one is three. We don't find this in the Bible. And this is why even those verses, and I'm not going to get too technical here, you can watch some of our other channels, videos on the One Message Foundation, that reference that Trinitarians use have been shown to be fabrications that were put into the Bible later on in the 9th century. And the earlier manuscripts don't have those verses. So, Like for example, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and Word. Exactly. This is, uh, this is a fabrication. fabrication. Uh, if you look at, I have a Greek... Bible that shows you references to earlier manuscripts, you will find in none of the early manuscripts you will find such a verse. Mm -hmm. And that's why Trin Trinitarians have kind of brought this verse into the Bible, and Unitarian Christians will still today reject this verse. And yeah. many study Bibles will also point out that these were later editions. Wow. This is uh, it just mind-blowing. Um, but I'll comment more after we get past these two. Two more. Excellent. Two more to go. Um, the next one is going to be the fact that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, himself referenced that there is only one true God. Jesus in the Bible himself says, so this is eternal life that you may get to know the one true God and Jesus crime who Christ whom you sent in the Bible, according to Christians, and you can look up the verse, you find that Jesus says, that there is only one true mighty almighty God and that God sent Jesus. So now, if I say, Eddie, you are the boss, you are the one who runs this show and you can order me to go to another city on your behalf and represent you or your show, right? 
that clearly shows that you're the boss, you're in run, you're the only one. And you are sending a separate entity to represent you. So when I find in the Bible that Jesus is saying that, that they may get to know you, the only true God, and then separates himself from that saying, and Jesus Christ, who you sent, that is very explicit to me that Jesus is not God. The, the one being sent is not the sender. Exactly. And anybody with an open mind and an open heart that looks at that verse will come to the conclusion. Repeat that verse one more time. Where Jesus Christ says that this is eternal life, that they may get to know you, you the only, only true, true God, God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Sounds like, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammadur Rasulullah or yes. Isa Rasulullah. Yes. Right? So this is like saying the testimony This is like of saying as a testimony of faith of the Muslims that we bear witness that there is only one worthy of worship. The only God worthy of worship God. is Allah. And the prophet of the time, you would pay testimony that he is a prophet sent by God. As today we would say, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a servant and messenger of God. And if me and you were in the time of Jesus, we would follow Jesus as the prophet of that time. That was the Muslims of that time. This is what brings someone into the fold of Islam. This statement yes. right there. Doesn't that resemble so much? It does. Statement? It does. What is this? John 17.3? Yeah, I don't know yeah. off the top of my so head. This, yeah. is, this is something that's so powerful because it sounds like the Shahada. It does, Almost yeah. Close. Number one now, this is the number one reason why mm. Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love and who we revere as one of the mightiest messengers. Again, you can get yourself, a, not buy, you can get a free ticket to the hellfire as a Muslim if you deny or disrespect Jesus or his mother. Very true. So now, clear, lucid, unambiguous, Proof that Jesus is not the literal, I'm uh, gonna literal God, Son of God. I'm going to give it to you in this one. I remember these verses really well. Even though we didn't prep for this. This is all off the hook. This is Dean Show Live. Huh? Yeah. Um, the first is Matthew 21, 19. And the next is Mark 13, 32. I believe. I could be wrong. This, but yeah. this is what I remember. Where Jesus does not know. In Matthew 21, 19. Jesus sees if he's hungry, first thing, how does God get hungry? Uh, but he sees a fig tree, and not knowing if there's fruit on it or not, he goes to the fig tree, and he finds that there's no fruit on it, for it was not the season, and then he curses it. Well, the Bible tells us that God knows everything. And if Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, we love him, we respect him, we believe he was born of a miraculous birth, we believe he was a true prophet, but if he didn't know that knowledge, that means he cannot be God. You cannot know everything and not know. It's got to be one or the other, right? Square circle, remember that. And in Mark 13, 32, I believe, where Jesus talks about the hour. And he said, nobody knows of the hour, not even the angels, nor the son, but only the father. And that's a very interesting verse. Because here, if Jesus had not clarified, according to the Christian Bible, nor the Son, they could have said, oh yeah, but if he says the Father and the Son is included. But this verse is very explicit. Mark 13, 32, I believe, where he says, nobody knows the hour, the reckoning when Jesus is going to come back, except he clarifies, not even the angels, nor the Son, only the Father. So if Jesus, according to the Christian Bible, peace and blessings be upon him, clearly states that nobody knows the hour, he doesn't know, nor the Son, he says, I don't know, only God knows, then that means Jesus could not be God. If Christians come back and say, hey, but he was on earth, and at that time he took a human form, okay, then he wasn't God. If he didn't have the quality of being all-knowing, and according to the Bible, God knows everything. And I believe, and you believe, and anybody with any sense would believe that God, the creator of universe, knows everything. At the moment that he doesn't know the hour, or he doesn't know the fig tree having fruit, he cannot be God. Mm -hmm. I am a firm believer that there is only one God, as Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all the prophets taught this message. That there is only one God. And that God sent prophets. He sent messengers to remind mankind out of his mercy for the guidance of mankind. And none of those prophets told their people to worship them. 
Rather, they call to the worship of the one creator. I believe Adam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all of them, were true messengers, righteous people who brought the message of the one great creator. And they did the will of that one great creator. They were all Muslims. They submitted themselves to their creator. I don't believe any of them were God. I don't believe Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is God. I don't believe Jesus, peace and blessings upon me, him are God. They all had miracles, different miracles. Moses split the sea. Abraham lived in fire, didn't get hurt. Um, Jesus walked on water. Muhammad split the moon. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. But those were miracles granted by the Creator to show the people that these are true prophets. After all this, someone listen to, listens to this, what do they need? Like someone like you were discussing something with, you were telling me about there were some of these um, influencers, YouTube mm. influencers, or me, uh, what's the name? We have, we have some uh, discussions going on. We have uh, Sneeko and we're going to be... What is it called? Sneeko? Uh, Sneeko, yeah. Sneeko? He is, uh, somebody has a very strong following. Yeah. And he seems like a very open-minded person, and we're going to be having conversations with him. We're going to invite him to Islam, and we hope that uh, he uh, enters Islam. So if someone like Sneeko watches this, and, we and he sees the breakdown, I mean, this should clear up any doubt who Jesus yes. is and who uh, he is. Andrew Tate as well. Andrew I know Tate. You've, you've had a conversation with him. Yeah. I want to send my message to him, and I hope people can forward this video to him. Uh, you know, we are, we are very open to discussing Islam with you. We don't force our religion on anybody. Islam is not something that is forced. It's something that comes from the heart. But we do want to spread the message to you. You know, think about what we have said. And if you're interested, reach out to me or to Eddie. And we'd love to be uh, a means of you learning about the true message of Islam, the message of peace, the message of guidance, the message of that one creator, the same message, the one message that all the prophets brought. Uh, we also have young Don. We we wish Who's good for him. Who's this guy? Uh, he's also somebody that has a social media presence. What does they do? What what do they do? Um, they gamers or? I think he does games. He the does games? some I don't know videos. I yeah, I, I don't I don't watch a lot of social uh -huh. media personally. But uh, I've had one conversation with him. And How'd that go? Um, you know, we we presented some of the fallacies of the Bible to and Don to young Don, young yes, Don. and he was unable to defend the Bible. Yeah, and unfortunately, it seems like he's taken to a. Uh, you know, kind of becoming more Islamophobic some than to learn. Some people who um, th they get the injection, you know, of truth, and they get a little hostile sometimes. Well, why is that? You see that? You know, we do yeah. because uh, sometimes people, instead of wanting to learn the truth, they just want to defend whatever they have come to believe. And this is why, um, again, this is an invitation to Young Don and anybody else. Let's have a conversation live. We can do it online. We can do it offline. Um, instead of just sitting by yourself and spewing out whatever you want, sit down. Let's have a conversation. And uh, we'd love to discuss Islam with any of them and give them the true message of Islam. And the rest is in the hands of Allah. It depends if they have true sincerity to find the truth. Yeah. They will find it. But the things that we've mentioned from the Bible, from these points, we want everybody. And it doesn't matter if you're famous or not, or if you're a YouTuber, or if you're not. I want you to think about these things. Uh, your own instincts, your own heart will tell you that the great creator of the universe, the one that controls everything, the one that made everything, that made me and you, that made everything in the universe and whatever we don't even know and see, is not going to be uh, peeing on himself. Right? He's not going to be uh, hungry. He's not going to be uh, not knowing things. That, that's the, if you are in that state, then you're not the creator of the universe. You know, humans, even prophets, even pious people have needs. Human, we get tired. But Allah never gets tired. What does the Quran tell us? That Allah, slumber does not overtake him. He never uh, gets busy from one thing, unable to handle another thing. Right? Humans have these shortcomings. So if somebody has these shortcomings, then they're not God. Mm -hmm. And the one that is God will not have, a, he will be all-knowing, all-powerful, all-capable. You know? Some things are beneath his honor, right? Because God is the most high. But he is all capable. So if you say somebody is tempted by the, the devil, then you know that's not God. God can't get tempted, you know? People get tempted, but not God, right? If somebody doesn't know something, then you know that's not God. If somebody is not capable, then you know that's not God. 
we believe the great creator is above that we say in islam in the quran there is nothing that can even be drawn to a comparison with the creator with allah there's nothing we we don't say god is a man we don't say he's a monkey. We don't say he has uh, a wife and a child and you know a girlfriend. And then these these are all hu human relations, right? These are human ideas. We believe the Creator is above that. What do we say about God? And this is the message I want everybody to know. We we believe in what God has told us about Himself, that He is one, that that God is above. He is He is far above our imagination. He is far above us restricting him to being a human being or an animal or a wood carving or a statue. He's above all that. He created everything. He's always been there. He will always be there. He is the owner of the day of judgment. He is the one that the judgment is his. That is God. That is the creator. And that is the one we want you to believe in. That God, that creator sent us messengers. And the true message of those messengers was that there is only one God. Worship no idol, worship no human, worship no saint, worship just that one God and follow the prophet of your time. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, Absolutely. how could you say that the people of Moses had no idea who Jesus was? They had no idea who the Holy Ghost was. They just knew God and they had to do good deeds and they had to do all of that. And then Jesus comes, peace and blessings be upon him. And then the whole game switches. <laughs> The whole game switches up to now, you don't have to worry about good deeds. Salvation is free. You just believe in Jesus. Uh, does that make sense? You know, I'm going to think back to my early days when I used to go to church and I used to honestly try to grasp the concept that the preachers would be telling us. And they would tell us something. They would tell us that Adam ate from the tree. And this was such a sin that all children are born sinful. They are sinners, right? Some Christians try to switch that up today, the sinful nature, but this is what we were taught, is that they are sinners. Now think about that. Eddie, you have kids, right? Imagine if you make a mistake. Let's say you run a red light or something. Could I go arrest your son for it? That'd be unjust, no. That would which court in the world would accept that? Who does that? Right, who does that? If I, if, if I, as Usman, Let's say I rob a bank. May Allah not make us do such things, but let's say mm -hmm. I do. And a court comes and says that we're going to arrest your son and, and then whenever you have a grandson, he's going to get arrested and your great grandson, they're all going to be felons. They're going to have felonies on their record because of your crime. They might do that in some in a communist country or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever that's done. I don't think any court, I don't, I don't think even it. in a communist country, anybody would accept that as justice. And we believe God is just. And I think all of you watching would believe God is just. So now in the Christian doctrine, Adam eating from the tree was such a sin that all of mankind is born with the sin. They're born sinful. And how do you get rid of that sin? Is God sends his son, which is also himself, but it's his son. Doesn't make sense there anyway. And then humans torture, betray, put a thorn crown on his head and beat and, 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 and crucify and kill God or his son, not sure which one, and that gets rid of the sin? Come on, that it, makes no sense. It had me thinking when you were saying who would do that, the reason I say communist countries is like when you have certain people, let's say in China, and then they're coming out and speaking of their story, some kind of truth. Then they go after their family and whatnot. Yes, that's true. You know, some, but think about that. But this is not, you know, who would consider that justice? That's not. Ju that's injustice. Even in China, if somebody robs somebody, yeah, I cannot imagine that the Chinese the government system, no. would say that not just that person, not his kids, but every grandkid, every child, forever that comes from that lineage is all going to be criminals. No. No. Nobody would consider that just. Now think through this. If I think of it in the terms that I understood growing up, somebody goes into a liquor store, a store, they're not supposed to take something without paying, they take it, they put it in their pocket, they walk out. Adam, eating from the tree. Yeah, yeah. And they come back as Adam repented. As Muslims, we believe he repented. His repentance was accepted. God is all forgiving. But the Christian doctrine would have it that he came back and he spoke to the owner, God, the owner of everything. He said, look, I shouldn't have done it. My bad. 
my mistake. I want to repent. And God tells him, you can't. You are going to be a sinner. Your children are going to be arrested. Their children are going to have their record. You're going to be born. Everybody's going to be born with that crime on you. Unless my son, which somehow is the owner and his son, but anyway, his son, who was a perfect child, 4.0 student, all A's, never disobeyed his parents, never did anything wrong, never broke, perfect example. I want you who stole, who did this wrong, to have your kids and your family come and torture him and beat him and kill him. And then we're even Stephen? Makes no sense. <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> you know, I mean, just forget the indoctrination and, 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 the, and the slogans and all of that. Just, just think through that. Does that make sense to you? How could killing God get rid of sin? Huh? I, I, is God suicidal? Was this a suicide mission? Uh, uh, it doesn't make any sense. So if Andrew Tate, uh, Young Don, what's the other guy's name? Sneeko. Sneeko. If any, uh, so is Sne okay, Young Don is a Christian. Yes. Um, Andrew Tate says he believes in God. I honestly don't believe, even though he throws up the Trinity, but I honestly don't believe he believes that. But God law knows best. Mm -hmm. We just went over the Trinity and everything. So if he watches this, he can, you know, if he's sincere, he looked into it and, and then uh, the other person, um, Sneeko, is he, is he Christian? Sneeko is uh, not very religious. Uh -huh. He is kind of learning, and he seems very open-minded. And if he sees this, this is an invitation. We hope to talk to him. Uh, we're not here to indoctrinate anybody. We're just here to answer questions and share our message. So we'd love to have a conversation with him where we explain Islam to him and answer his que questions without me being interrupted by Young Don every few minutes. Uh, we'd love to have a conversation, and we hope that Allah opens his heart to the truth. If um, Look, I don't know what kind of question they'd ask, but a lot of times people will throw out some of the same random questions that they've heard others. Mm -hmm. So someone like Andrew Tate says, look, I believe in God. Excellent. You know, and I give to the church, and I love God. I go to church twice a week. Right? So this is between me and God. What, what would mm. you say to Andrew Tate? My message to Andrew Tate there would be that as you believe in God, that's the first step, that's excellent. We also believe in God as Muslims. But what does that mean you believe in God? Do you believe God has a son? Do you believe God has a Holy Ghost? Do you believe it's in three in one? And if you do, think through that. You know that God is in three. You know that this idea of a trinity was developed over time. That wasn't the true message of Jesus. You know that the church is corrupt. I mean, uh, I don't have to explain it to you. you. You've lived in countries I think you know better than me that this system is, was a political system. Why could priests not get married? The Catholic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, and the political power that they developed through different tactics. These are ways of corruption. If you look, if you go to church and the way you worship, just think about that. Look at that and look at the Bible. Is that the way Jesus prayed? Do you go to church and put your head on the ground and pray to the one creator? Think about the message of Islam, the belief in one God, the belief that Jesus, Muhammad, Abraham, Moses were all prophets, peace and blessings be upon them. And tell me, doesn't that make sense? And if that does, then don't worry about society. Don't worry about cancel culture. Don't worry about anybody saying anything. Believe in that one God as that God has revealed about himself, that he is one, that he has no partners, that he has no children. He's not born from anybody, and he, nobody's born from him. If we think about this whole concept of God having a child, and then that being him, it doesn't make sense. If Mary is the mother of God, how could God impregnate his mother? Does that make any sense that to you, Eddie? makes no sense. Andrew Tate, does that make sense to you? Sneeko, Young Don, does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense. Sneeko says, look, I'm young. I got time to figure this out. I would tell Sneeko, go to a graveyard. And this is a personal practice of mine. I don't tell people about it, but I'm going to share. Occasionally, by myself, I go to the graveyard. And I look at those plaques. In the Muslim graveyards, we don't have tombs and things. We have a plaque that has the years the person lived. And check how many people younger than you are in that graveyard. We don't know how much time we have on earth. There is no guarantee that you're going to live to see tomorrow. But there is a guarantee that death is coming. Kullu nafsin maut. Allah tells us in the Quran that every soul shall taste death. That's a guarantee. How long you will live, none of us know. How many of your friends have already passed away? I had friends that were 14, 15, 16 that I buried uh, in my teenage days. So don't put things off. 
You want to be right with God. You want to be on the right path of the true message. Because that's the purpose of your creation. The purpose of life is to recognize and worship your creator. So don't waste time. When you know the message of Islam is the truth, accept it. And, and it doesn't matter if you're not uh, a YouTuber and you're watching this video and you're on that edge. I want you to take that leap of faith and, and, and accept Islam. You know Islam is the truth. You can watch our videos. You can t learn about the scientific miracles, the linguistic miracles, the historic miracles, the miracles, the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have a video about the moon splitting and me and you had done a show about yeah. it. But now it's time for you to accept Islam. Don't put it off anymore. You know, reach out to Eddie. Or we'll do your shahada on the show. I know, accept Islam for your own salvation. Allah doesn't need anybody. We need our creator. This is, if you become the most powerful, rich, wealthy person in the world, but you don't know the purpose of your creation, you failed. Wow. We got a few more minutes. I found, have you seen something really simple? I usually tell people, you know, give them this homework. If you, and you believe that if they are to put aside any intermediaries between them and God, mm. they don't call upon anyone other they're conf some people confused, some people, you know, what you're saying, it just kind of connect that if they're sincere, it's connecting with their logic, their mind, their right. heart. It's like, this makes sense. To get out of the confusion, them calling on the Creator alone, with mm. not calling on in the name of Jesus. You know, if someone says, I pray in the name of Jesus, mm. you know, wh what's wrong with that? But think about that. How did Jesus pray? Whose name did He pray in? Whose name did Moses pray in? Whose name did Abraham pray in? Look at the Bible. Who prayed in the name of Jesus? I mean, until Paul in the Pauline Doctrine, which was after that, Paul, as for th those of you that may not know, he never met Jesus. You know, he claimed he had a vision or whatever. I mean, he, you could eat some mushrooms and see your own, own visions. I'm not worried about that. But if you look at Saul, which is Paul before his becoming Christian, he used to persecute Christians. If you look at the earlier followers of Jesus, they disputed Paul. They disagreed with him. And today, your Christianity has been set up more by Paul than Jesus. Wasn't he an early bounty hunter? Christian? He was. He used to torture, kill, find, uh, massacre Christians. And Jesus lived by the religious code of that time. Circumcision, keeping the Sabbath, and all of that. Paul did away with the, all that. Why did he do away with it? If it was to be done away with, Jesus would have done away with it. Peace and blessings be upon him. Mm -hmm. So I want you to go back and think, how did Jesus pray? You know, I was in Tampa recently, and, and I think there will be a clip posted on our channel soon. We, had, uh, we were out with some of the brothers after one of the programs, and this lady came and started singing and dancing and yelling and screaming and saying, I pray in the name of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, let's bust a dance move, you know. And I told her, look, is that how Jesus prayed? Is this what Jesus taught you? Peace and blessings be upon him? No. Jesus put his head on the ground and prayed. He didn't pray in the name of Jesus. Moses didn't pray in the name of Jesus. Abraham didn't pray in the name of Jesus. Moses, Abraham, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. They prayed to that one God. So pray to that one God directly. Put your head on the ground and ask that God for guidance. Everybody, if you're not Muslim, tonight, I want you to just pray to the one creator. Say, oh the creator of the universe, the one who gave me life, the one that made the universe, guide me to the truth. And open your heart, and you will see Islam is the only truth. Whoa, there's a, a lot to digest there, but we end with something very simple. Asking the one creator of the heavens and earth, via B. Andrew Tate, uh, Sneeko, Young Don, or anyone who's listening, can be a pastor, a preacher, Christian, you know, anybody. And at the end of the day, you know, if somebody wants to continue on their ways, I mean... We don't force Islam on anybody. Islam is not something that was forced by the sword. Um, unlike if you look at South America and you look at the Philippines where the Spanish and others, they, they forced Christianity on the people. If you look at history, when, when Palestine, when Jerusalem, Al-Quds, was ruled by the Muslims like Salahuddin Ayyubi, Saladin, as people say. <laughs> and I just want people to be able to understand you had churches, you had synagogues, you had Muslims. Everybody was allowed to worship in their way. Whoever wanted to accept Islam could. When Spain, Andalus, was ruled by the Moors, by the Muslims, there were Christians, there were Jews, there were Muslims. Some people converted themselves. They reverted back to their original faith of Islam. Some people didn't. They were allowed to live. 
when the Spanish Inquisition happened, go look it up. History. They, the Christians that came with the Inquisition, they came with a sword and they massacred and tortured anybody who was Jewish, Muslim or a different type of Christian until they didn't leave anybody except what they found to be Christian in their way in Spain. The Spanish Inquisition, Google it, look it up. If you look at this, the Spaniards that came to South America, they destroyed the native uh, religions and languages and they forced people into Catholicism, not Islam. So we're not forcing anybody. We're bringing you a message, a message of peace, a message of guidance, a message to have inner peace and societal peace, a message of Islam, a message of the one creator, to believe in him as all the messengers from Adam to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all of them, the message that they brought. That's it. And just ending with that, it reminded me of an th authentic statement from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who's describing a house as missing one brick. Mm. And people are going around this house saying, wow, how beautiful is it? But there's one brick missing. He said, I am that brick. The last of all the prophets. The last of the prophets and messengers. Who was sent for Andrew Tate? Yes. Sneeko and Young, Young Don, Don Boy. And for everybody else. He's the messenger for all of mankind till the end of time. Till the, end, till the day of judgment. Whoa. This, uh, inshallah, can be a benefit for people who are seeking to know the truth, who are sincere. You broke it down, top ten reasons why Jesus is not God, Son of God, but he's a mighty messenger, just like Abraham, Moses, and Prophet Muhammad, all of them who brought the same message. Worship the Creator, not the Christian. Thank you so much. This is Sheikh Uthman Ibn My Ibn pleasure. Jazakumullahu khairan. We say, may Allah give you the best of reward. Amen. And we hope that everybody watching... Uh, will really take this message and contemplate it. And if you haven't accepted Islam yet, uh, this is your this is your chance. This is not a coincidence that you're watching this video. The God, the Creator, wrote for you to watch it. So don't waste this chance. Thank you, thank you, Shay. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for tuning in. I told you, you don't want to miss these exciting episodes, exciting guests. So make sure you subscribe right now, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time. And look. I have a surprise for you. And I can't leave you without a gift. If you want to read the book, the Quran, that goes over the purpose of life, why you're here, why you've been created, talks about Jesus and his blessed mother. There's a whole chapter named that for her. www.thedeanshow.com. You get your free copy of the Quran sent to you. That's my gift, our gift to you. And we'll see you next time. Make sure you support the Dean Center where we have the Dean Show in it. And much, much more. We'll see you next time. Until then, the greetings of Jesus and Muhammad and all the messengers. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من بنى لله مسجدا ولو كمفحص قطات بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة. تخيل أن تكون سببا في إنشاء مركز إسلامي في قلب أمريكا بمساحة خمسة وثلاثين ألف قدم. تخيل أن تكون سببا لأن يسجد الخلق بين يدي الخالق وأن تكون بتوفيق الله. سببا في تعرف الآلاف على الإسلام ودخول الكثيرين في دين الله ما أجمل أن تكون لك صدقة جارية يتعلم في ظلها المسلم الجديد مبادئ الدين ويجد فيها الشباب المسلم بيئة آمنة جاذبة تعينه على الاستمساك بإسلامه الداعية الأمريكي إيدي هو من يشرف بنفسه على هذا المشروع الدعوي الفريد بعد أن قدم مئات الحلقات وملايين المشاهدات عبر اليوتيوب خذ من وقتك دقيقتين وساهم بما تستطيع في هذا المشروع العظيم السلام عليكم Would you like to be part of the first ever mega da'wah center in the US? A 35,000 square foot former church on a four acre plot equipped with a masjid, a da'wah center, a TV recording studio, a Dow outreach program, and much, much more. Over the last decade, one of the most successful and consistent Dawa series has been The Dean Show. And now we want to help our brother Eddie take it to the next level, from The Dean Show to The Dean Center, inshallah, where it's going to be this mega Dawa Center in Florida. And we need your help doing so. So please, my brothers and sisters, donate today with whatever you can, and share the khair. Share this link with everyone you know because everyone who donates through you sharing the link, you're going to get part of the reward as well, inshallah ta'ala. Wa jazakumullah khairan.